Hey, it's Mike the Scrapping Guy from ScrappingGuy.com here. I uh, hope you're having a good day. I'm certainly starting my day off pretty well. And I can't believe that uh, we're mid-summer. It's actually the end of July already. Uh, pretty soon the kids will be going back to school, and my kids are certainly not happy about that. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is show you today a quick and easy way to make an element or an embellishment for your digital scrapbooking pages and we're going to use something in Adobe Photoshop Elements called a clipping mask. So um, rather than try to explain it, um, talking to you about it, I'm just going to go ahead and explain it as I do it here. So what I'm going to need to do is first I'm going to create a new file, blank file, and I want the, um, the background before I do anything, I want to make sure that's transparent. And the reason I want to do that is because it's going to be an embellishment or an element that you're going to want to put in your pages and we don't want any kind of a background going around it. Um, width we're going to do, um, I don't know, let's try 500, 500 for the height and we'll set the resolution at 300 and go ahead and hit OK. And here we have our file that we're going to be working on, our blank page here. And one of the things we're going to need to do now is create the shape of the element that we're going to want to uh, create. So what I'm going to do is come over here at the bottom here and I'm going to click on the uh, or yours at my have rectangular tool or any of these other ones. What we want to do is go down to the custom shapes tool and we want to go up here and I actually have a lot of shapes loaded in. You might not have all of these. Um, what you can do if you don't is go over here and you can load up different ones um, on the right here of what you have and if you don't um, if you don't have all of those you can actually search the internet there's a lot of different places that'll um, have shapes for Photoshop there for you and all you need to do is once you download a custom shape just go ahead and you wanna drill down to your Photoshop elements or Photoshop um, folder which is probably in the programs uh, program files folder go ahead down to presets and then eventually you want to get into custom shapes and then that's where you go ahead and you can paste the file that you just downloaded which are all the different shapes so uh, anyway I've already done that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, let's say this is for a kids uh, a kids page I'm going to go and I'm going to create a duck so I'm going to click on the shape for the duck and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hold the shift key down so that way the aspect ratio aspect ratio won't change if I didn't have the shape uh, the shift key down you can see I don't know if you, it might be difficult to see on this video, but the shape kind of, you know, forms uh, kind of weird here. But anyway, what I want to do is hold the shift key down, kind of keeps it all proportionate, and then there we have our shape, and it's set up as black, which is fine. So the next thing I need to do is over here we have our shape tool, and it's not an actual graphic layer; it's really just kind of a shape. So I need to do uh, for to do the um, the clipping is I need to simplify this layer. So I'm going to go up here at this top button and I'm going to click Simplify. And what that does is it's now a graphic that I can go and I can manipulate and change and, and do sorts of, all sorts of things. So I know one of the things that I'm going to do, and this is you'll see why in a second here, but one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bezel, uh, or I'm sorry, a bevel to this, uh, to this shape. So I want to do that before I do any kind of uh, clipping mask. I'm going to go and I want to add that first. So I'm going to come up to my effects, uh, click on the layer styles if you don't have that already set up, and go over here to my bevels. And I'm just going to do and choose a simple one, and it adds the. Uh, you can see it adds the highlight there, and uh, you actually see the other end of it too once we get the uh, the wood on top of it. But uh, I'm going to just go ahead and leave it like that. Now I've already downloaded uh, one of my shapes, or actually not one of my shapes, one of my backgrounds, which is a wooden background. So I go ahead and open that up there, and I'm just going to drag it over on top of the file that I just, or on top of the shape that I just did. And I'm going to go ahead, and because it's a lot larger than the duck, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to kind of bring it down to size here. And the one thing you want to definitely do is make sure that your whatever um, pattern or uh, whatever you're going to fill that shape with, you want to make sure it's larger than the shape itself. So as you can see here, I definitely have it wide enough and it's definitely going to be long enough to, to cover the entire shape that I just created. 
So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to come down to my layers. And as you can see, we have the wooden on the top and the duck on the bottom. We definitely want to make sure that the, the pattern that we're going to be using uh, in that clipping mask is on top of the shape that we created. Now to, to make this a, an actual clipping mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Alt key down and I'm going to just put my cursor right in between the, uh, the two layers and I'm going to left click. Now, as you can see over here, what it basically did is it kind of masked out everything of that um, of that wood into the shape of this duck, which is actually kind of cool. So now we've got a 3D looking kind of duck here. Let me get this wood out of the way. We have a 3D looking wooden duck that we can uh, we can easily use it just exactly the way it is. And as you can see, with I can actually move the wood behind it and it stays within that duck. So if you have a certain pattern that you want it to look a certain way, you can certainly go ahead and, and move things around to make it a little bit better. Uh, this wood's pretty similar no matter where I put it, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it where it is. But you just want to make sure, like I said, that it's covering the entire shape that you're working with there. So there we have our, our duck, and we can certainly leave it the way it is and, and keep it there. But I'm going to add a little bit more to it. I'm going to go over to my burn and dodge tool. I'm going to work with them a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and click the burn tool and you can you can change the different brushes. Uh, I just use a regular round brush and then I can use my um, left and right bracket key to make changes to it. And you can see what the burn tool does is it actually darkens your picture or your image. So it actually adds a little bit more of a shadow on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now come over and choose the Dodge tool. And what that's going to do is that's going to brighten up certain pictures of it or certain uh, parts of your image by just left clicking and kind of following around with it. And the more you do, the brighter it gets. So it adds a little bit more, oh, that's a little too much, a little bit more depth to the, to the design. You can even add maybe a little bit in the center here. I mean, to redo that again just to kind of give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to it there. So um, it's it's actually that simple. The last thing I can do is go and I'm going to double click on this FX since we've already created the bezel or the bevel, I keep saying bezel for some reason, the bevel to this shape. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click that and I'm also going to add a drop, drop shadow and we can change the size of it here so we just have a little bit of a drop shadow we can use uh, in our design. So you can either do that here, or what you can do, actually what might even be better, you know what, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to cancel out of that. Because whenever I put this in an actual layout, I can add the drop shadow to it at that time to make sure it, uh, it looks right on the page. Uh, there's one last thing I want to do though. I'm going to go and I'm going to add a little eyeball to him because he just doesn't really can't see anything when he's like this. So I'm going to kind of zoom up to the uh, to the eye there choose my um, circle elliptical marquee tool and I'm just going to draw a little circle right in here to be like the eye and I'm going to hit the delete key and as you can see it kind of got rid of the eye, we have a hole there now and it even created the little bevel going around uh, the eye to give it a 3D look also. So there I believe we have it all we need to do now is just go ahead and we're going to save it as a PNG file file and save as. Just go ahead and make sure you choose PNG. There it is. And what that'll do is that'll actually save the um, save the transparent transparency on the background so that you can uh, use it in your layouts and not have a white background and have to cut it out. So I'll just call this wooden duck PNG. and have none as the interlaced and there we go there we have it there's a quick and easy way to make a wooden duck using the clipping mask and an overlay of wood um, a wood pattern on there now you can obviously take this idea and use other things such you know if you want to create buttons or uh, anything that uh, all these there's a lot of different shapes just check your shapes custom shapes of what you have 
and just go ahead and use a clipping mask to uh, and, and kind of work with it. It's uh, it's a pretty cool and easy uh, easy thing to do. So there's our quick video at um, from the Scrapping Guy, and you can see more like this at www.scrappingguy.com.